Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is June 26, 2023, and it's reported that Barcelona are not giving up on the signing of Marcelo Brozovic, and they still think that they have a chance. Also, the club have completely ruled out the possible signing of Fabricio Diaz from Liverpool de Montevideo. And finally, it looks like Arnau Tenas is not going to be renewing his contract with Barcelona. We have a lot to discuss, so let's dive right in. Welcome, everyone, to Barca News' live stream, which is on every Monday and Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, we'll do a segment of the news, and then we'll head to the comment section to get a discussion going. And also, as I started doing lately, I will be adding chapters to the live stream once it ends and timestamps in the description for those of you who prefer shorter content. That way you will be able to uh, flip through the video to the different topics that you're interested in learning about. Now, having said that, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. And as always, if you do have, uh, if you do want any Barcelona jerseys or gear like this shirt that I'm wearing, make sure you hit the kit back. The link is down below in the description. Now, let's begin with the two Barcelona signings that have been, um, that we've heard about so far. The first one is Ilkay Gundogan, who today, Barcelona, officially announced the signing of the player. Of course, we've known this for, uh, for several days now since I broke the news. I think it was last week, but now the news is official. Ilkay Gundogan is a Barcelona player, and today Barcelona made the announcements through all their social media accounts. So for those of you who still had doubts about, the, about whether Barcelona were going to sign Gundogan or not, fear not. The German midfielder will be coming to Barcelona. And this is, of course, huge, huge news for the club because I think he's going to be that uh, injection of creativity that the midfield is currently missing. He's going to definitely elevate the, the quality of the squad. And I think it will make us more competitive on the European stage. Now, Elka Gundogan did have some words about his signing for Barcelona. And to be more specific, he said... If I was going to move, there is only one club in the world that made sense. It was Barcelona or nothing. Ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed of wearing that shirt someday. I am confident that I have a few more years left at the highest level, and I just want to help bring Barcelona back to where they deserve to be. So Ilkay Gundogan confirming what I had been saying in previous videos before the announcement of his signing, that he was only considering two options. It was either renew with Manchester City or come to Barcelona. He was not interested in the other offers that he had from the likes of PSG, Arsenal. I think there was some interest in him in the Serie A. And of course, the Saudis did try to offer him a lot of money to go there. But the only two options in the German midfielder's mind was either Manchester City or Barcelona. And thankfully for us, he chose Barcelona. Now, Gundogan also talked about playing for Xavi Hernandez. And he said, it will be a reunion with my old friend Lewa. As you don't know, uh, if you might not know, Lewandowski and Gundogan play together in Dortmund. But anyways, I'll continue. He said, and I'm excited to play under another manager who I have admired for a long time. When Xavi and I talked about the project, it just seemed so natural. I see so many similarities between us as characters and in the way we see the game. I know there's going to be a lot of pressure at Barcelona, but I love pressure. I love to get out of my comfort zone. I was not looking for an easy landing. I was looking for a new challenge. That's what this next chapter is all about. I can't wait to play in the Barcelona shirt. So definitely it's not going to be an easy challenge. You know, it's still a brand new project. And Barcelona now that have won La Liga will have to prove themselves on a European stage. And that's going to fall on the shoulder of the entire squad. And of course, on Ilka Gundogan, who's now part of the squad. So Elka Gundogan, Gundogan is now officially a Barcelona player. He has agreed to sign a two-year contract plus the option to renew for one more. He will have a 400 million euro release clause and he will receive a 9 million euro gross salary. So 4.5 million euros for the player because, you know, the other half goes to taxes. And that's, you know, in line with the promise that the player made that he was willing to reduce his salary to come to Barcelona because that's exactly what he has done. He has reduced his salary to come to Barcelona because that was always his goal 
And plus, he preferred a longer contract with a lower salary than a short contract with a higher salary, which is what Manchester City offered him. They offered him a much, much higher salary than Barcelona, but we're only offering him one season. So he opted out for Barcelona, who were offering him two plus one, but with a smaller salary. Now, the other signing, and this is big news, is Vitor Roque. You know, I've talked about him in several videos. Barcelona have reached an agreement with both the player and Atletico Paranaense to sign Vitor Roque. But of course, the agreement was not finalized. The agreement is finalized between Barcelona and the player. Everything is agreed to. It's complete. It's done. The only thing that was missing was the agreement with Atletico Paranaense. And I reported last week that Bar the Atletico Paranaense representatives had flown to Barcelona to try to finalize those last few details of the contract. And while now it's being reported that Barcelona are expecting to completely finalize the contract between them and Atletico Paranaense this week. And as soon as that contract is finalized, the official announcement should be coming out. So stay tuned to the channel for that official announcement. Again, hit, hit the subscribe button so you can stay informed. I do put um, updates in, um, in the community tab, which I did today when Barcelona announced the signing of Gundogan. Uh, and you only have an access to that community tab if you hit the subscribe button. Now, it looks like some are saying, of course, it's not official until we have the official announcement, but some are saying that looks like Vitor Roque could sign till 2029. So that's a six-year contract. That's huge. Barcelona are really betting on him to be the future number nine of the, of the team. He will have a 1 billion euro release clause. And it's also reported that Vitor Roque will have will receive a 3 million euro salary. That's the lowest bracket pretty much in that payment scale that Laporta instituted at the club. And of course, it's understandable. You know, he's only 18 years old. He's coming from Brazil, hasn't played on European stage. So he will be receiving only 3 million euros, which again, it's amazing because let's not forget that Vitor Roque had offers from some of the biggest clubs in the world, like uh, Arsenal, like Chelsea, like PSG. Um, and they were all offering him a lot more money than Barcelona. He could have easily went to any of those clubs, but he chose Barcelona. And it was thanks to him saying, I only want to go to Barcelona, is that this deal is happening. And of course, also thanks to Deco, who made this whole deal happen as well. Now, it is reported that there will be a clause in, um, in the contract of the player that might see him come in the winter instead of the summer. And the reason for that is, as I've said many times before, in order for Vitor Roque to come to Barcelona, the club first to have to offload players. So it's reported that Barcelona uh, will be putting a clause in that contract that says if the club cannot offload players and cannot bring Vitor Roque this summer, that he's still going to sign the contract and he will be coming in the win uh, during the winter transfer market. So regardless of what happens, whether Barcelona offload players or not, Vitor Roque is coming. The only difference would be whether he comes now or whether he comes in the winter. But either way, Vitor Roque is coming. He will be Lewandowski's substitute and eventually will be the future number nine of the, of the club. Huge, huge news for Barcelona on both ends, Gundogan and Vitor Roque. Anyways, let's head back to the comment section. I see it's, it's a lot of comments going on. So let's get a discussion going and then we'll talk about Brozovic because Barcelona are not giving up. And they're hoping that they could sign the Croatian. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. All right, a lot of people in the comment section. What's up, everybody? Uh, the eight says, are the rumor about Xavi asking the plug to the club to pay his coaching staff more than the board asking him to pay is... I don't understand your question, but... Xavi's uh, not demanding anything as far as his salary. It's the club who want to give him a raise, him and his staff. Um, so if that answers your question, hopefully... Uh, hopefully it does. McParsa says, Mo happy 6K subs. Question, why is Ronald Koeman not looked at as the greatest defender of all time? Surely he needs some uh, respect to his name. Um, I mean, he is a great co he is a great defender. I don't know if he was one of the greatest, um, but I would say he was top of his generation, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. What's up? Choo 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 Choo's in the, in the chat. Chucho, I got news about Nico today, so you're not going to like it, but there is news about Nico. Uh, let's see. Abbas says, what do you think about the Girona midfielder? Uh, Oriol Romeo, I think I'm not a fan. I don't think that should be Barcelona's main option, but he's not. He's only a plan B 
in case Barcelona cannot sign anyone else, he would kind of be like the last resort. And as a last ditch effort, last resort kind of thing, I don't mind it because he is, he might not be a, a quality, a world class, you know, pivot, but he did come up through the Barca Academy. He knows the Barcelona style of play. He would be a very cheap option, you know, only 5 million euros. So as a temporary solution, I'm okay with it. Again, as long as it's the last, last option, if Barcelona cannot find anyone else, then yeah, I'm okay with that option. But no, I wouldn't want Barcelona to go out and try to sign him only if there's no other options. So that's a good segue because let's talk about Brozovic. You know, I talked about yesterday in yesterday's video, Italian media are reporting that he's very, very close to signing with Saudi Arabia. Inter Milan, his current club, have already agreed to the deal with Saudi Arabia, uh, with more specifically Al Nasser, which is the club where Cristiano Ronaldo plays. Um, you know, Al Nasser offered Inter Milan around 25 million euros. So the Italian said, absolutely, you can have him and my grandma and everybody else because they're in desperate need of the money. But of course, the player himself hasn't officially given his approval. He hasn't said yes yet. The Italian media are saying that he's very close to saying yes because Al Nasser are offering him a 30 million euro salary per season. Nobody's going to offer him that in Europe. So it's reported that he is close to agreeing. But nonetheless, he hasn't said yes. Inter Milan have said yes, but not the player himself. So having said that, Barcelona are not giving up on the signing of Brozovic. They think they can still lure him to the camp now. To report it at the club, want to put pressure on the player, you know, to try to bring him to, um, to Barcelona, to try to convince him to wait. Because again, Barcelona cannot make a signing unless that player agrees to wait because Barcelona need to offload players. And that was the main reason why Sofiane Amrabat is not coming to Barcelona. The club did reach out to him. He said, hey, we're interested, but you would have to wait. He said, I don't want to wait. I want to seal my future now. And that's why Barcelona ended up ruling out the signing of Sofiane Amrabat. So now with Brozovic, they want to convince him to wait for the club, to offload players and try to sign him. Again, he looks like he's close to signing with Saudi. But it's not over yet. He hasn't given his final okay. So Barcelona are not giving up on it. Now, the club is reportedly hoping that the news of the signing of Gundogan will play in their favor. Because, you know, Gundogan had the same doubts as Brozovic is having now. Which is, you know, is Barcelona going to be able to register me? Are they going to be able to sign me? Am I just going to wait this whole summer for nothing? And since Barcelona, you know, promised um, Gundogan, yes, we will sign you. Everything's going to go good. And now Barcelona made it official. They hope that maybe this news will calm the doubts of Brozovic. And maybe Brozovic will say, okay, then looks like, yes, they will be able to sign me. They promised it to Gundogan. They signed them. So maybe I should trust them. Maybe I should wait. Again, it's going to be difficult. But nonetheless, Barcelona are not losing hope. And they're hoping to lure them to the, um, to the camp now. Well, I guess the Olympic Stadium not to come now since the team is not going to be playing there. Now, I personally, out of the, all the options that so far have, have, been, uh, have been discussed in the media, this would be probably my, my preferable option. I think Marcelo Brozovic would bring something to the team that the team are currently missing. Um, not just his experience, but his skill level as well. Um, and I hope, out of all the options that are being discussed now, I hope that Barcelona can sign him. But again, we'll have to see whether the player will be willing to wait for the club. Now, let's get back to the comments section, because, and then we'll head to the next segment, which is Fabricio Diaz, who's not going to be coming to Barcelona, because Barcelona have ruled out his signing, and I will tell you why. Okay. Um, Teja says, Barca should look at... Uh, God, I hope I can say that name right. Coupe, Coupe Meineras from Atlanta, or Yusef Fofana from Monaco for Pivot. Uh, okay, so and I've said this a lot of times and I'll say it again. Barcelona are looking for a proven pivot. Someone who already has the experience, someone who's played, someone who's, you know, either in his prime or a little bit past his prime. They're not looking to bring a youngster to the pivot position. You cannot ask a youngster with no experience to start in the pivot position for Barcelona. That's just too, mu too much of an ask because that's the most important position in the team. So Barcelona are looking for a proven pivot. They're not looking to bring someone to teach him or to adapt. That's not going to happen because if you bring someone who still needs to adapt and learn, you're going to have a really, really bad season. Um, all right, let's see. 
where else? Oh my god, this chat just completely jumped on me and skipped a bunch of people. Um, okay, Raul says, I like Rome uh, Romeo to be honest, he was very good this season for Girona and played similar to Busquets' role. Yeah, he does play very similar to Busquets because again, he came up through the academy, so he's trained in that, in that exact um duties that Busquets did. Plus, Girona do play a very similar style of play to Barcelona, so he does have the know how for sure. Um, so I wouldn't mind it again as a last resort. It's not like we're bringing, you know, just any random bum off the street. He definitely knows what he's doing, but I don't think he has necessarily the level to be kind of like, you know, the main priority of Barcelona. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, coach says, bro, we don't need Brozovic. We need Kimmich. Yeah. But Kimmich is not moving. He's not coming to Barcelona. Bayern are not interested in offloading him. And even if they were, we can't afford it. So, I mean, we could need – need and can is two different things, right? We can need – we need Mbappé, we need Haaland, we need all those guys. But can we sign them? Absolutely not. Same with Kimmich. Okay, uh, let's see. Chris says, who would you choose to start, Pedri or Frankie? Two different roles. You can't really choose one over the other. You know, it's kind of like saying, who, do you, who would you choose, Lewandowski or Ter Stegen? You know, two different roles. Um, I wouldn't choose one or the other. Uh, it's just, you know, two completely different roles. All right, let's get back to the news because Barcelona have ruled out the signing of Fabricio Diaz. And I will tell you why. Now, Fabricio Diaz, Barcelona were tracking him for quite some time. They were interested in bringing him kind of like a future bet, you know, bring him to the Barca Athletic, have him adapt, learn, eventually promote him to the first team. Um, his price did jump up, which kind of put the, the brakes on operation. It was initially thought, I think this was last year, Barcelona could sign him for around maybe three, four million, and it went up to six million. And now that he won the World Cup with Euroway, the under 20 World Cup, the price has gone up to eight million euros. Now, again, this would be a future bet. This would not be someone who comes and start in a pivot position. You know, a lot of people are always commenting in the video, we should give Fabricio Diaz, we should give Fabricio Diaz. And I always keep saying, you cannot bring Fabricio Diaz to be the starting pivot. You're absolutely out of your mind if you think that's a possibility. This is not FIFA, this is real life. You can't bring an 18-year-old kid from Uruguay who's never played European football and expect him to start in the most important position in one of the biggest clubs in the world. Just impossible. Too much pressure. There's no way that that would happen. That's how you ruin players' careers. When you bring young players from South America or other leagues, you're supposed to grow them slowly, get them adapted, and slowly transition them into first division football in La Liga. You can't just bring and be like, all right, here you go. Good luck. Have fun. Not happening. So since Fabricio Diaz is a future bet and he would cost 8 million euros, Barcelona have figured out you know, if I'm going to bring someone for that much money to so be a future bet in a pivot position, might as well allow La Masia kids to be that future bet. You know, more specifically, you have, you know, Marcas Ado. He's in Barca Athletic. He's someone with a lot of promise. Someone that Barcelona have been working on for quite some time. They've been investing in who Barcelona hope he will become the future pivot of the first team. So Barcelona decided instead of bringing someone else, who would then hamper the growth of someone like Marca Sado or other midfielders from La Masia, it's better not to bring him at all. And I completely agree with the club here because, again, i rather Barcelona invest in La Masia kids as future bets rather than bring someone else and then stunt the development of someone like Marca Sado. And then when Marca Sado's time is to go to the first team, he's not going to have a space on the first team because Fabricio Diaz just took his spot and now he has to go somewhere else. And then we regret it. And then the same people who are saying we should bring Fabricio Diaz will be the same people complaining about why is Barcelona selling La Masia players. So that's why Barcelona have ruled out completely the signing of Fabricio Diaz. they rather bet on Marc Asado and other midfielders in, uh, in La Masia rather than bring someone else from the outside who would hamper the growth and development of those players. So let's get back to the comment section. And the next news will be about Nico, since we are talking about La Masia graduates. And we do have news about the Barcelona midfielder. 
All right, let's see. Um, where did we leave off? I have no idea. This chat just completely got away from me, guys. I'm sorry about that. Mm. Brian says, would you be mad if Barca have another bad champions run? I think for the next season, our goal should be at least the round of 16. Um, I know some people are saying, oh, we're going to win the Champions League next season. No, absolutely not. I think that's a very unrealistic expectation. If it happens, yeah, sure, great, amazing. I'll celebrate it, but no, there's no, I mean, again, this is still a brand new project, brand new players, it's still growing. We're still adding pieces to the team. We're still figuring out what we need, what we don't need. So, no, you cannot expect Barcelona to win the Champions League. You know, we're, we're miles and miles behind teams like Manchester City, uh, teams like Bayern Munich. So I think round of 16 should be our goal. Okay, let's see. Um, Steven says, are Barcelona going to sign him? Who are we talking about? Khaled says, Kessie to Bayern. He was great for Barca limited time and he performed good for a first season in transition and scored in crucial times. Um, he was good, but I wouldn't say he was great either. And when you're having a hard, difficult financial year where you need to offload players, you know, you can't keep someone who's just going to be on the bench and going to give you, you know, decent performances every now and then. Because, yes, he did score goals in the crucial moments, but he also had a lot of bad matches too. Um, so, yeah, he was good. He wasn't great. And if you can make 30 million euros of someone who came for free, I'd rather make those 30 million euros rather than have KC on the bench again for a whole season only to have a handful of good performances. Okay. Let's see. Legendary Hat Dude says, is Xavi still thinking about using Eric Garcia as part-time pivot? He played him in that position one game last season. So with Eric Garcia, the club are planning to offload him if they receive a good offer. As far as Eric Garcia playing the pivot, you know, Xavi only used him in two matches. One of them he did great. The other one he didn't do well, which is expected. Brand new position for a player who hasn't played most of the season. Um, so again, I think we go back to the same to the same argument as before. Barcelona are looking for a proven pivot. Someone who can just day one hop in that position and know what to do. Eddie Garcia would not be that guy because he's not a pivot, right? It's It would be a transition to him. So if Xavi were to use Eddie Garcia as a pivot, he would be more likely more of a sub that can come off come off the bench maybe the last 10, 15 minutes, maybe play against like smaller teams so he can like f fully adapt to that position. But no, he wouldn't be the starting pivot for Barcelona. It's just impossible. All right, let's talk about Nico since we are talking about midfielders and we did talk about La Masia graduates. Barcelona have officially received the first offer, the first official offer because there's a lot of interest in the player, but no official offers until today. Barcelona have received the first official offer from Real Betis who want to take the player on a one season loan. Now, Barcelona are not entertaining the offer at this moment. They've put it aside because the club's main goal is to completely offload the player he they want to get rid of nico gonzalez they don't want to loan him again they loaned him last season to valencia they want to completely take him off completely off the books because xavi does not count on him he's been a big disappointment for the entire sporting arena um there's also the problem with his discipline and there's of course many players on the uh, available for the midfield and plus xavi does not consider that nico is uh that so pivot that what the team uh what the team needs so for now the real betis offer is going to be put to the side jorge mendes is working hard on try to find a new club for nico a club that would take him on a permanent basis and if barcelona cannot find cannot offload nico by the towards the end of the summer transfer market then they will can obviously they will send them out on loan whether it be to Real Betis or even Valencia, who, who do want a, an extension, do, they want another season with the player. But for now, the main goal of the club is to completely offload Nico. They think they can make around 10 to 50 million euros, um, which will be, of course, pure profit for the club since Nico came up through La Masia. And it will be one more salary of their books. Now, the sad thing is that Nico at one point did have a value of 40 million euros. But again, unfortunately, he didn't really live up to the hype expectations so his value has gone down to 10 to 50 million euros which is what barcelona hope they can get for him okay so 
Let's get back to the comment section and then we'll talk about another lone player who Barcelona are hoping to offload permanently, and that's Clemon Lingle. And there is some news about him. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off? Eh, legend, legendary hat dude says, Are there any La Masia pivots? Yes, Marca Sado is the main one. I know there's another one, I think it's Prim. Uh, but Marca Sado for sure, he's kind of like the one where, where there's the most expectation around him. So that's why Barcelona decided not to bring Fabricio Diaz because if they bring him, Fabricio Diaz would only stunt the growth of Marca Sado. So because if you spend eight million euros on 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 a on a pivot, you're gonna expect him to eventually work his way to the first team. And then if Fabricio Diaz works his way to the first team, where does does, does that leave Marca Sado? That leaves him with no spot, which means he would have to go somewhere else. Riverside Clinic says, wait, are you really a clinic? <laughs> Nico is average. I agree. Um, and the club also agrees, and that's why they want to offload him. Jing Sang says, De Young being the highest earner at the club, do you think he justifies his wage? If we sell him around 100 mil, we can directly invest in the position that we need the most, uh, which is wage relief. Okay, Frankie De Young. That's a, that's a difficult question to answer because... I think he is very valuable this season. This season, he was very valuable for the team. We finally saw the Frankie de Young that we've been wanting for many seasons. You know, unfortunately, he didn't have the best of stars to when he joined Barcelona. Xabi has been able to unlock his full potential. And we've all seen what Frankie de Young can do when he is at his, I don't know if you want to say prime or at his best, right? We can all see how he how easily he can dribble that ball, how he can break lines, how he can you know, connect with the offense, but at the same time, come back and cover his area. So does that mean he um, justifies his wages? I don't think anyone would be able to justify that wage. That wage is just way too high. I think only maybe the likes of Messi could justify a wage like that. And that's because someone like Messi generates a lot of money, right? A lot of people used to say, oh, Messi's the reason he Barcelona bankrupt, right? They used to pay him 100 million euros. Yeah, but he was generating 300 million euros for the club, right? But only a handful of players can do something like that, right? Only the likes of Messi or Ronaldo can generate so much money because their brand is so huge. So Frankie or any other player, I don't think anybody can justify that kind of wage uh, unless they can make money through sponsorship deals and stuff, which Frankie doesn't really do that much. Anyways, let's talk about Lenglet because he is another player on the chopping block who Barcelona want to offload. Of course, he spent last season with Tottenham Hospers, where he did really great. Tottenham Hospir made it clear that they wanted to keep him. Lingle said, also, yes, I want to stay in the Premier League club. And Barcelona were looking to offload Lingle for around 15 million euros. But then it all fell through when Tottenham Hospers got greedy and they decided to take advantage of the situation and lowball Barcelona and they offered 5 million euros. Now, Barcelona have said no to that offer. Just because Barcelona need to offload players to clear space on the wage bill doesn't mean they're going to give them away like it's Christmas. So they've said no to that deal. And it's reported that Tottenham Hotspurs are ready to start a new rounds of negotiations because, again, the club do want to keep the player. The only reason they released that statement saying that Lingle was coming back to Barcelona was to put pressure on the club in order to reduce their asking price of 15 million euros. Now, Barcelona are hoping to meet somewhere in the middle. You know, Barcelona want 15. Tottenham Hotspurs are willing to offer five. Barcelona think that they can close the deal around 10 million euros, which is exactly what the player's transfer market value is, around 10 million euros. So we'll have to see. Hopefully, this new round of talks will be successful because, again, Barcelona needs to offload players. And Lingle, in fact, has one of the highest salaries on the squad. You know, he's one of those players that Bartomeu renewed right before he resigned. Gave him a, con a contract until 2026. He gave him a ridiculous salary. So Barcelona need, need, need to remove Lenglet's salaries off their books. And plus, if we can make those 10 million euros, that's even more money for the club to be able to sign new players. All right, let's move to the comment section and then we'll end today's live stream with the news about Arnau Tenas, who looks like he will not be renewing his contract with Barcelona. Abbas says, any updates on Arda Guller? Okay, Barcelona are still interested in Arda Guller. 
His release clause is 17 million euros, which is what his current club, Ferenbache, are asking for. Now, Barcelona are willing to sign him, but only if the player A chooses Barcelona and B, if they, Ferenbache would be willing to negotiate that price, whether, payment, whether it's payment plans or reduction of the price or some kind of deal. But Barcelona cannot afford to pay the 17 million euros for Arda Guler right up front when he's not really a priority for the club. They do want to sign him, but he's not a main, main priority. The priority right now is the pivot. That's the only position that Barcelona could afford to spend money on. And if they if they go and pay those 17 million for Arda Guler, that would mean that Barcelona would have you know very little money left for the pivot position, which is what's most needed right now because there are no pivots on the team, right? There are other Arda Gulers on the team, you know, Pedri, you can even argue Gundogan, Frankie, but we don't have any pivots. So you can't go spending all your money on a player that's not your number one priority and then leave your pivot position completely exposed. So if Fred and Bacci are willing to work out a deal, then Barcelona will sign him. If not, it's not going to happen because there are, I think, something like nine clubs who are interested in the player. And it looks like the player is working with Fred and Bacci to kind of get like a, an auction going to drive his price up. If that happens, Barcelona are out, right? They cannot compete with other clubs as far as price. Uh, transfer fees. Dark Knight, what's up, man? Oh, where did your comment go? There he is. Okay, he says, I know coach, but I don't see anything special with Nico. Do you think he is truly a talent? Um, I think, I mean, I don't think he's like a horrible player or anything. I think he's a good player. Um, just not Barca level, you know. I think he could do great at other teams, but I don't think he could be Barcelona pivot. Plus, he's not a pivot anyway. Um so I don't see why people always arguing that Nico should be our pivot. He's not really a pivot. Okay, let's see. What else? Chris says, I'm happy with the signing with Ilkay Gundogan. Me too. Mark says, why does Valencia want Nico if he didn't play much or often? Uh, that's why they only want him on loan. You know, um, they don't really have the money to sign anyone for that position. So they want him on loan because I guess something is better than nothing. And again, Nico's not a bad player. He could do, you know. He could do good with a team like Valencia, just not good enough for Barcelona. Uh, Anthony says Lenglet isn't good. He should go. That's why the club want to offload him because he's not good. Abbas says Barca are afraid of offloading players. No, they're not. The players just don't want to leave. Uh, let's see. What else? Isaac says only Casado is a typical DM. Exactly. He came up through the Barca Academy, so that's what he's been trained to do, to be that Barcelona pivot. Um, Steven says, Mo, would Abde return to Barcelona? Okay, Abde, Boshabi wants him to play the preseason to see if he can use him. It will depend on the player himself whether he wants to play the preseason or not. Because, you know, as I said in the previous video, Abde and his agent think that he could perhaps go somewhere else and be a starter versus coming to Barcelona and maybe be on the bench because Xabi wants to... Test Abde in the preseason, see if he can earn a spot on the first team. And if he does, it's reported that Xabi likes Abde more of an option from the bench, someone who can come, you know, last 20, 30 minutes, change the outcome of the match versus someone who would start in that position. And, of course, the player doesn't want that. He wants to be a starter. So we'll see if Abde will wait and actually play the preseason to see if he can convince Xabi otherwise or whether he's going to decide to go into another team before the preseason even starts. All right, let's do the last bit of news, and then we'll have several minutes to keep the discussion going. And the last news is that Arnaud Tenas has officially announced that he's not going to be renewing his contract with Barcelona, which is very sad because he is a La Masia product. I was hoping he could be Barcelona's next goalkeeper, but it looks like he will be leaving. And the reason for that is because his contract is set to expire on June 30th, so that's in four days. Barcelona had the option to extend that contract, but they never reached out to the player. They never tried to, you know, try to negotiate anything. So since they never reached out to him, the player himself has decided to leave, which again, it's sad, but I do understand why Barcelona are not, you know, trying or fighting for him because after all we have, first of all, Mark Ter Stegen, <clears throat> excuse me, still has plenty of seasons left in him. And then we have, um, Iñaki Peña, who just renewed his club with, uh, he's just renewed his contract with Barcelona. You know, he's only 24. Um, so when Marta Stegen is ready to hang his gloves, Iñaki Peña will be the next goalkeeper. 
And then, you know, since he's 24, he still has plenty of years ahead of him. So by the time it's the turn of Arnaut Tenas, you know, Arnaut Tenas is going to be already 30, 32. So I get why Barcelona decided not to, you know, try to extend the contract of the player. But nonetheless, it's still sad because it's always sad to see, you know, La Masia products leave. But unfortunately, not everyone can play on a first team. There's limited spots, hundreds of La Masia players, but only... 22 spots on the first team. Okay. Oh, there is interest in him from many teams, including uh, Las Palmas, which I mentioned. You know, Las Palmas right now, they just got promoted to the first division. Their main coach, their head coach is Garcia Pimienta, who was the Barca athletic coach. He really wants in, uh, Arnaud Tenas on his team. And, he, of course, he also wants Alex Collado, who hopefully Barcelona will be able to offload to Las Palmas. So that's all the news for today. We have a few more minutes. Let's get a discussion going. I see 105, 108 people watching, but only 42 likes. So let's hit that like button because actually the like button helps a lot. It prompts the YouTube algorithm to, prom uh, to promote this video or to recommend this video to other people. And that's what helps this channel continue to grow so I can continue bringing you all the Barca news. Again, I will be putting timestamps uh, once the live stream ends. Um, timestamps in the description and I'll be adding chapters to the actual timeline of the video for those of you who like the shorter content I know some people don't like the live streams because they're long but so be uh, keep a lookout for that all right let's see Ibrahim says probably do a deal with Lenglet or Nico for Guler so here's the thing about and I get a lot of these suggestions Barcelona should you know trade this guy for that guy for that to happen the teams the other team should needs to want that, right? You can't just call for Mbachi and be like, hey, I'm just going to give you Nikel and Lingley and you got me Arda Guler, whether you like it or not. That's not how it works. The other team needs to actually want that deal to happen and the players need to want that to happen. And I don't see Lingley or Nico wanting to go to the Turkish league. Um, you know, Lingley, he's happy in the Premier League. He did well in the Premier League. He wants to stay at Tottenham Hotspurs. Nico, you know, he's still young. He's going to want to continue in European football. Um, so you can't just, you know, be like, Tell them, it's not like you put a gun to a player's hand and be like, you're going to Ferenbache, whether you like it or not. And the same to Ferenbache. It's just it's not how it works. Okay. Um, Rusin says, any truth at the rumor that Newcastle want to pay 40 mil for Ferran? Not that I'm aware of, and I highly doubt anyone would want to pay 40 mil for Ferran. Steven says, Mo, Neymar to Barcelona. Not happening. Uh, Barcelona cannot afford the transfer fee. They cannot afford his salary, and they don't want anything to do with him. Xavi has already spoken publicly and said he doesn't want Neymar on the team. He also has told the, the board of directors that he doesn't want Neymar on his team, even though they have a really good relationship. You know, Neymar is finished. You know, we have to. He had great years at Barcelona. We'll never forget that MSN, Messi, Neymar, Suarez. He brought us a lot of joy, a lot of goals, beautiful football. But his time is his, his time is up. Um, he's out of shape. He constantly gets injured. He's very indisciplined. He's always, you know, he's more busy partying, visiting his sister than actually playing football. Okay. COH 11, seven, all those numbers says, when will preseason start? Preseason will start in Ju July 10th. Um, we'll start. And then, um, the actual, trip to the u.s will be july 19th okay biaka says shabby should give arthur vermeeren a chance he can replace busquets um i don't think we can afford arthur vermeeren okay let's see what else how best says another the young saga what do you think about the young transfer to byron uh that's not happening the young has already told byron that he doesn't want to leave barca Barca have already made it clear that De Young is untouchable. So that happened. Sundar says, if we miss Brozovic, Dani Parejo versus Oriol Romeo, who will be best? Uh, Oriol Romeo, for two reasons. Actually, three reasons. First, Oriol Romeo is 31. Dani Parejo is 34. You know, right there, the age. Second, Oriol Romeo came up through the Barca Academy. So he knows what a Barca pivot looks like and what a Barca pivot should do. And third, Dani Parejo is not really a pivot. Um, so it wouldn't make sense. Pau Prim. Yes, Pau Prim is another player that Barcelona have um, in the academy that if Fabricio Diaz comes, will be, you know, would be stunting his development. 
Let's see. Dane says, what about not signing a pivot? Uh, we need a pivot. You know, not signing a pivot is like saying, what if we don't sign a goalie and just, you know, hope the defenders can keep the ball out of the goal? <laughs> just as you need a pivot. Um, okay. Jardin says, is Vitor Roque a 100% done deal? I talked about it at the beginning of the live stream. Um, so I don't want to be repetitive. If you want to check it out, once it ends, you can uh, play the video from the beginning. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Kuchu says, I think we would. We would at least get the quarterfinal. It's sure. Uh, if, I'm guessing you're talking about the Champions League, hopefully. Uh, Steven says, Mo, any update on Bruno Jimaraes for Rafinha? You know, like I said when I broke that news, is I highly doubt that that report was ever true. Nothing has been said ever since, and that just confirms my suspicion that that report was probably never true because there's no way Newcastle are going to want to get rid of their best player right when they're about to play in the Champions League next season, and especially not for someone like Rafinha. Like, Rafinha's good, but he's not Bruno Jimaraes good. Plus, Bruno Jimaraes has, I think, his value is 60 million euros, and supposedly they were offering 30 million euros in cash, so that's 90 million euros. For Rafinha, like even if you like Rafinha, you can admit that he's not worth 90 million. But anyways, one more comment and then we all we will close. Uh, Sander says, is Oriol good than Kasi? I'm guessing you're asking if he's better than Kasi. Kasi's not a pivot, so you can't really compare both the two players. You know, it's like saying, is Mark Ter Stegen better than Lewandowski? Uh, you know, two different positions, two different profiles, uh, you know, or apples and oranges. Okay. All right, guys. That is it for today. That's a wrap. We covered all the news. I will, again, I'll put chapters at the, at, um, in the timeline of the video. I'll put timestamps in the description. And then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. So have a good night or good morning wherever you are in the world. And as always, Miss Cabarza.